Spirit. And let us be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah the word that Isaiah son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days to come the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of mountains and shall be raised above the hills all the nations shall stream to it Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their steeds into pruning, spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn more any more. O house of Jacob, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Let us say together Psalm 122, breaking at the asterisk. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing. Within the gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city. That is the of To which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Since the of Israel, great the for there are the thrones of judgment. The of God, David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May the peace be within your walls. For my brethren and companions' sake, 
I pray for your prosperity, because the house of the Lord our God was to do your Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day not entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken, and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore. For you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, 
If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an expected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Remember, we also have candles, right? So we're going to have candles here, like the candles we have there. Okay. We'll put those candles. And you can put these candles on the table. Jesus' birthday. Church year of the cross. 
we were reminded of Jesus' death. But the cross is when our king became king, the king of everything on earth and on heaven and in our hearts. That is a very unusual coronation for human kings, right? And, but that is what is special about our faith. We, that's why we have the mystery of our faith is about we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we very good. All these participation. <laughs> we remember his death last week, and we proclaim his resurrection. And uh, we have, in fact, in the season of Easter, we're going to celebrate that, and we're going to prepare for that in 40 days. Now, for the next four weeks, we're going to prepare for Jesus coming, his second coming. The first one, we were not there, but we remembered, based on scripture, that about 2,000 years ago, in the town of Bethlehem, there was a manger, there were shepherds, and uh, that night, the world changed. We know from last week, the first coming did not seem to end very well. People were not ready to receive Jesus and his teaching. But despite Jesus' crucifixion, our faith has taught us that yes, Jesus has died, but he's risen, and he will come again. The Gospel today tells us that Jesus will come back at the end of time. In some translations it says the end of age, at least the age as we know it. And this is the chapter that I studied in school. It's called eschatology. You have to look it up in the dictionary. And uh, that is the study of what happens at the end. And uh, there's, we know from the scripture today that there is death, there is resurrection, there is judgment, and there is Jesus also coming back. The book of Revelation also tells us about the new earth and new heaven. And today we heard in the prophet Isaiah talking about the image of this wonderful place where everybody in Jerusalem is getting along. And, uh, still far from that. Now, we don't know much about the end, but one thing for sure, he is coming. Jesus is coming. And there's three things that we have to remember about his coming back. One is that we don't know when it will be. Two, there will be judgment. And three, we must be ready. First, we don't know when it will happen. No one except the Father knows when. Not the angels, not the disciples, nowhere do we know. So people will sometimes try to guess when that will happen, or that that's not very helpful. That's completely useless. Now, judgment. Judgment is about divine justice. God is a good God. God will judge us with love and mercy and Divine justice is about making things right. All the things that are wrong in our world, all those things that we want to change, those are the things that God will make right because Jesus will be back. And third, we must be ready. And he makes a good point, Jesus, in the scripture today because he tells us what happened to him in the flood. When Noah was making the ark, everybody was partying and not paying attention. Or they were not getting ready, but Noah was getting ready. Also, um, Jesus gives us another scenario. Imagine if you knew that a thief is coming, then you would try to stop him. You would stay awake. You know he's coming at certain time and make sure that you would stop him. And uh, that is something that sometimes I find here. I find that. People who try to stop a negative thing, but they will not stay awake for a good thing, which is like Jesus coming. But let's stay awake. Let's become aware of what's going on. And that is why Jesus tells us that we have to be ready. We don't know when it's coming, there'll be judgment. And it's important to be ready. And he says, he ends the, the scripture today by saying, we must be ready. He doesn't say, we should, or maybe when you have the time, or whatever. It's possible, we must be ready. We must be ready because the Son of Man is coming, the King, the Kings. 
And uh, he has RSVP. He said he's coming. He will be coming. He is coming. We're, we're going to be that. So I think it's pretty clear that he is coming and we must be ready. So you may be wondering, am I ready? No. That's the short answer. I'm not ready um, to receive the King of Kings. I, I, I get distracted, I get worried, I get um, so many things that distract me in the world and, and worry me that I, I forget who's king I am. And uh, Paul tells us to wake up. And that's a di difficult thing when you are trapped in a cave or in, in our bubbles and all the worries of the world. So, how can we wake up? I like to make lists to make sure that I don't forget anything. I, I have travel packing lists when I travel overseas. I have shopping lists. I have to do lists for myself and everybody in my family. And yes, I know I have a problem about that. And uh, I also have call email lists, that praying list. You know, don't do this because there's something that I don't need that. I don't have the second piece of pie. I like to be ready. I like to check off things on my list. But really, it's not about checking off things from the list. It's about staying focused on Jesus. And uh, Jesus really taught us one thing, to love God. Jesus told us that God is love. And uh, God so loved the world that he gave us his only song. And his son gave us only two commandments, to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength, with all our minds, and to love our neighbors. Good, you're ready, gorgeous. Now, that kind of love is, is scary. And I know sometimes I feel I don't deserve that kind of love. I feel like I'm not ready for that kind of love. And for many things that are happening in the world, I was not ready for it. I love it. 20 years of war for the pandemic or the shootings in, in Walmart and Virginia Tech and UVA and Walden. I'm not ready for that. And uh, that's why we're going to pray the Nicene Creed every Sunday because we have to be reminded of the king that we have. We have to be reminded that that is the person that is coming. And we don't know when, but we should be ready because. As the kids know, it's going to be a great party. And uh, that's why I prepare an Advent list. My Advent list uh, includes another to do list. <laughs> Would anybody like to help me? Straight me? Maybe? Would you like me to? Yeah. This is called an Advent calendar, no chocolate included. <laughs> Thank you. This is the healthy one. The Episcopal Church has a program called The Way of Love. And some of you may have read uh, Bishop Carroll's book, The Love is the Way. Well, based on that, there's seven practices. There's more things that, of course, we Christians need to do, but seven to focus on the next two to four weeks. To worship, so you can check off the first one. Then to go, maybe to go to a place you haven't been recently. To learn something new, to pray, to bless, to turn from something that you're doing or not doing, and to rest. That's the difficult one for me. And uh, I invite you to also join me in this if the Holy Spirit so moves you to check off things on this in this Advent calendar. Maybe we can get together in four weeks and see okay. how well we did in our checklist. Another thing is that I found when I came in today, I found this at the entrance. This is a very nice book. There's very good readings uh, that you can read one every day and uh, reflect on that. And think, really, I'm not getting ready for Advent this year, for the coming, the second coming. Another thing is that you know that um, we have a uh, request from Crestwood Elementary School to help us fill in 25 boxes for the children that don't have um, 
our food, you as a household. Yeah. I'm putting this in my to-do list too. And maybe you can only buy one or two things, that's fine. Just bring whatever you can will help us fill in those boxes. Uh, another thing is that I'm a member of the Order of the Daughters of the King, and my sisters and I chose to read Advent in Plain Sight. So we meet on Zoom and we discuss this, and we're very early. <laughs> and so I find what I, I like about this is that I do it in community. I think it's something that you share. The good news of Jesus coming is something that everybody should know. Uh, there's something else here that you can also find on the table at the entrance to to enjoy the entrance with your family and of course make a bead to take home so you can have hope, faith, joy, and peace within you. I commit to this in front of everybody so you can hold me accountable when I come back in four weeks. And uh, I believe that what St. Paul asked us in the letter of the Romans to stay awake is, is very, very relevant to me. Most of us know what we need to change and, or stop doing. Or, and uh, sometimes it's hard to change. The older I get, the harder it gets. So let's not do that any longer. Let's not put it off any longer. Let's remember that he is coming. Let us walk into the light, like the prophet Isaiah told us. So I invite you to get ready over the next four weeks because our king is coming. I suggest that you do not do it alone uh, because it's much easier and much fun to, to do it with others. We can all carry each other. So let's get ready together to welcome our king, Mark, your Advent calendar every day, and bring you back in four weeks. So tell us what you learned. Let's get ready. Stay awake. He's coming. Amen. Let us affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accord with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Um. The Prayers of the People God of light and love, we await this day in anticipation for your light to, to return to our world to the glory of your Son, Jesus. God, the author of our hope, help us to feel and share your love with all. 
Watch over your church and guide us as members of it on the paths of love and faithfulness. O come, O come, Emmanuel. God, full of mercy, we long for your light to illuminate the way. May the leaders of our world turn towards love and compassion. So to help us to live in unity with one another and be good stewards of your creation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. God, creator and architect of our planet, give us the peace to see your beauty around us, and may we love and care for it as you would have us do. O come, O come, Emmanuel. God, who came to us through the innocence of a child, help us to see things, to see your image in the face of everyone we pass each day. May your love surround those who are struggling or carrying her heavy burdens. In particular, we pray for Jin Sang and Sin and Shin and Shin Wan. Edie, Elaine, and family, Alex, John, Libby, Betty, Adriana, Leandra, Janet, and family, Daniel, Jennifer, and Derek, Katie, Kathy, Lisa, and family, Joseph, Marlon, John, and Beth, Ralph, Ted, Susan, John, Patrick, Carol, and Don, Barbara, Ginny, Dorothy, Joan, Jim, Virginia, Priscilla, and L.B. O come, O come, Emmanuel. God who loves us dearly in this Advent season when both joy and sorrow are felt deeply we pray for those who know the pain of addiction, depression, grief, loneliness, fear, illness, and hopelessness. Surround them with your love, and may they be relieved of their suffering. O come, O come, Emmanuel. God, whose Son granted us, through his sacrifice, eternal life, Gather us with all those who have died in your sacred heart. Into your sacred heart. Keep us with all your saints in the eternal life of Jesus Christ. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in God, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive and pardon all sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Good morning, y'all. Good morning. My name is Carol Echo. I'm from Michigan Stewardship. I'd like you to join me in all saying Stewardship Prayer together. It's on page 13 of the bulletin. Almighty God, thank you for all the gifts you've given us. Welcome to everybody joining us online this morning. It's good to be together on this first Sunday in Advent. So, and I want to encourage everybody to use that greenery and make a beautiful wreath to take home. You can light a candle each night uh, or each each week as we go around. You'll light a new one. Uh, they're lovely prayers to say within. It's a beautiful way to mark this season um, that we're in as we prepare and get ready for uh, Christ's birth here among us. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and we have lovely good things to eat, and you can kind of hang out and just visit and be with each other, which is a lovely part of it, too. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries today? Oh. Yay! It's a brave Jane. Anybody else? Birthdays, anniversaries? No? Okay. We get to pray over you. Happy birthday. It's, when? it's tomorrow. How exciting. That's great. Well, friends, please join me in praying for this beloved God. Dear God, we ask your blessing on Jane on this next year of her life. Surround her with your love, your wisdom, and your guidance. Bring her into an amazing year full of new opportunities and new things that have worked in her life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Happy Amen. birthday, you. All right. Well, beloveds, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Choir, one second. I missed it again. Ugh. Got an announcement. I got to do. We return the chalice. My apologies. The chalice is back. I missed this at 8 this morning. I threw everybody up. If you would like to receive the bread and the chalice, as you perhaps have traditionally done before COVID, um, please just come up to the offering, to the rail, with your hands out as you traditionally would. We also have myself and the lay Christmas minister in Tinkting, just us. If you would prefer that, you can just put a hand over and we'll know to entinct for you. It's also entirely appropriate to just take the bread or to ask for a blessing if that is what works for you as well. 
All who are seeking a deeper relationship with God are welcome at this altar. Yay, choir.
infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Son, heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to the work you've given us to do, to love and serve these faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, may he whose second coming in power and great glory we await, make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you.